to new rock stars. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and out of all the creepy, spooky things that crawled out of the multiverse of madness, by far one of the most haunting items was undead Doctor Strange's soul-infested cloak. Not only is it definitely the most metal superhero accessory of all time, it's a brand new variation of Strange's cloak of levitation, even for the comics. But although this is technically the Soul Cloak's origin story, there are plenty of clues sprinkled throughout the comics that hinted answers to some of my questions about it. Today, I'm gonna explain what I think the Soul Cloak is and theorize about how and why it works. Before communing with the Darkhold to dreamwalk into his variant's corpse, Strange warns Christine that the souls of the damned will come for him and that she'll need to protect his body while he's under. In parallel to the scene from the first Doctor Strange movie, instead of shoving a giant needle through the chest of his unconscious body to keep him alive, Christine's now the only defense between his conscious mind and his unconscious physical form. But why do these demonic spirits come for him? Where are they coming from? How exactly does Strange control them? Some possible answers to these questions could be found within the pages of the Darkhold and its extended tomes. In the comics, the text of the Darkhold was written by the Elder God Shathan on indestructible flesh parchment in a chamber within Mount Wondecor. These spells would later be transcribed into several scrolls and the Shiatra Book of the Damned, or the Book of Sins. These works serve as a source for the Necronomicon and other dark works. As we learned in WandaVision and the Multiverse of Madness, the user of the Darkhold is cursed as the book's evil consumes them further with each reading. In the comics, a long list of magic wielders and superhumans have lost themselves to the Darkhold, their souls forfeited to Shathan. We also see in Multiverse of Madness that the Darkhold has powers that transcend its own reality. Not only is it the blueprint for dreamwalking across the multiverse, but it gives Wanda the ability to command demons from realms beyond her own, and ultimately proves to be linked to other versions of the Darkhold throughout the multiverse. This is key because it indicates that the power of the MCU's Shathan extends beyond individual realities and likely operates from a realm in between realms. It would make perfect sense that Doctor Strange triggered this outburst of phantasms from outside the scope of the contained 616 reality. This explains how the spirits were able to move from Zombie Strange's body in Universe 616 to Sinister Strange's sanctum, and how they knew what dreamwalking was. To me, all of this points to the Splinter Realms, a collection of dark realities that once were known as the Dark Dimension. Long ago, the Dark Dimension was fractured into several different planes of reality, including the Nightmare Dimension, the Realm of Madness, Mephisto's Realm, and a bunch of other connected worlds in the comics that would need a whole other video to explain. Our friends at Epic Hero Shop just dropped their epic summer collection. These t-shirts and tanks are inspired by various alcohol brands with a twist of nerd. They've got Asgard IPA merch from Fat Thor Brewing Company, Bat Cardi, Sokovia Vodka, and of course, there's no laws when you're drinking Wakanda Claws. Keep your actual summer beverages cold with these soup can koozies inspired by various Marvel costumes. They've got Captain America can, Spider can, and the Iron can Mark 32. You can't put a suit of armor around the world, but you sure can put one around your gesh dang drink. They've also dropped their full Multiverse of Madness collection with some spoilery items that showcase the big cameos and moments from the film. Epic Hero is always putting out cool creative merch inspired by your favorite content. You best believe that they had an Agatha all along or Loki variant shirt almost immediately after those concepts entered our vocabulary. And hey, if you have a background in graphic design, Epic Hero is looking for designers to join them at their Austin office. Check the link in the description. Prepare to have an epic summer at epichero.shop.com with their summer themed designs and their full Multiverse of Madness collection. To find the answer to our question about Strange's cloak, we need to look at one of the realms at the center of the Splinter Realms, Limbo, aka the other place. This Limbo isn't the traditional Limbo we learned about reading Dante's Inferno in high school. It's a pocket universe home to a wide spectrum of demonic entities ruled by a supreme sorcerer. These demons can assume any shape or form mandated by the sorcerer if he or she is particularly powerful. However, However, left to their own devices, these dark spirits will plot to betray and conquer whoever holds the highest power over them. The title of Supreme Sorcerer of the Other Place was first held by Belasco in the comics, a sorcerer who used his mastery of alchemy in the Black Arts to strike a deal with the Elder Gods, allowing them to cross over to our earthly dimensions in exchange for immortality and ultimate power. He was eventually defeated and sent to Limbo, but this dude made lemons out of lemonade and spent his years conquering the Other Place and ruling the demons within. So, when the souls began a escaping Strange's body as he dreamwalked into his dead body, I think that the silent black in-between space he began to sink into was in fact his soul being pulled into the other place. But like Belasco, Strange was able to command these souls, forging them into a soul cape pulled directly from the dark dimension. Alternatively, it's also possible that Strange read from the portion of the Darkhold called the Necronomicon during this scene. The Necronomicon was derived from certain parts of the Darkhold and bound by an alchemist named Abzul Ahazred. This is of course a reference to H.P. Lovecraft 
Lovecraft's fictional account of an Arabian man by the same name composing his version of the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon surprisingly hasn't been name dropped yet in the MCU. In the comics, however, this particular text allowed its reader the ability to summon strange creatures and stranger gods to their aid, which appears to be exactly what happens in this scene of Multiverse of Madness. Although the souls that eventually formed Strange's cape attacked him at first, the ability to summon and wrangle these creatures could have come directly from the pages of the Necronomicon within the Darkhold. Because this is the MCU, and they're allowed to pick and choose tiny details from different comics to use as an outline for their films and TV series, I wouldn't be surprised at all to learn that a combination of these magic wielder stories, Velasco's and Abzul Alhazred's, were used as inspiration for Strange's brief but impactful experience with the Soul Cape. And now that Strange is permanently stuck with an extra eyeball on his forehead, I think it's totally possible that we might see more of his ability to draw power from this realm in between realms in the MCU. Although the Darkhold has been destroyed and Doctor Strange is unlikely to dreamwalk into his own rotting body again, the ending of Multiverse of Madness could be hinting that he is now the supreme sorcerer in command of these demons from Limbo. And you gotta admit, if our version of Strange can't be the sorcerer supreme of Earth 616, this would be a pretty metal alternative career trajectory. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Whitney Puppy, follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love, and thanks for watching. Bye!